Hey guys and girls. Um, so, okay, so it's time for another video log. Um, to this, on this episode, we're covering rust. And as you guys know, 306s have a lovely habit of rotting out on this rear wheel arch up near this here seatbelt anchorage point, uh, where you know the seatbelt spool point. You also notice there's a lot of water in my car, a lot of uh, condensation. Well, <laughs> I was wondering what the hell happened with that. <laughs> Turns out that my Football down there is absolutely full. I don't know why that is, because I've cleaned the sunroof drains out on this thing, but still, it appears that water is getting in. In fact, that seat is soaked. That torch is absolutely soaked. This carpet is wet. <laughs> Let's chuck them keys somewhere, so I won't be needing them for a while. But yeah, that's rather Disappointing. How wet is this seat? Considerably. Let's open up that sunroof and see what. Oh, I need the keys in the ignition to do that. Let's go around the car and do it. <coughs> yeah, so today, that is what we're trying to fix. A whole a lot of rust, or a whole lot of hole. <laughs> Lovely stuff. As Marv would say on Home Alone 2, wow, what a haul. Oh, is my battery dead too? Oh, no, my battery's not dead. We're good, we're good. The radio will probably try and fire up. Let's turn that off. We'll just turn it off. There we go. Uh, let's open up the sunroof and see what's happening. Uh, the sunroof does work somewhat. <laughs> Rust all the way. Oh, let's have a look from above. Oh, there you go. The sunroof drain is not unblocked. Even though you can blow through it, <laughs> it's not unblocked. And that means I've got a poke something all the way down it, see if I can unblock the thing. Lovely. I was really hoping that was going to be unblocked. <clears throat> uh, oh well, what's more water in the car now? We'll leave the roof open. I uh, wonder if there's any drain plugs in this. God, it must have really rained last night. <laughs> there's no puddles around anywhere. That's a lot of water. Yeah. Anyway, this is what we need to address. Trouble is, is it's rotted that much, it's actually come through here as well as. So we've got some nice, uh, fill it full of weld I think, and then just skim over it with some filler or something. <clears throat> Pretty sure the rust is up here as well, it's travelled up the seams and it's gone right the way up into the car all the way up into it, which is unfortunate really. There's nothing much I can do about it, apart from cut this whole panel off, which is something I'm not willing to do, not on the car that I only paid 50 quid for, but we'll repair it as best as we can and just fill it full of wax, I'll stop any, f uh, you know, any more rust. Uh, I mean, like I say, it's up here, look. <coughs> it's, uh, it's not good. We've also got rust down there and inside that <coughs> cavity thing. It's pretty bad in there as well. You can see straight through. So all in all, it's it's really bad. Let's open this boot up just so we can get some air through this car. <coughs> and I've really got to find a place to put all these plastics because uh, they're in the way. So lots of angle grinding, I think. And lots of sparky sparky with a weldy. You can see that a bit better in there now. <clears throat> yeah, these uh, RBG LED things are going to come in useful a bit later on. You'll hopefully see what they are all about when this uh, when this rust's all been fixed up. And stuff like this. I'm not really that fussed about fixing it too, but too much. So long as it's just covered, just plated over. I'm, tempted to not even bother cutting the crap out of it to be fair 
bumper needs to come off uh, so I can see what horrors are behind that. There's probably quite a bit. I don't know what this side's like, I'm assuming it's going to be the same. I just hope it's not up in the pillar. Um, like you say, you can't see inside there without taking a bit of plastic out. And I ran out of space for that, so that'll come a bit later on. Anyway, enough talking, let's get to it. Okay, so the first port of call was to completely empty the boot, which I've done. Uh, most of it's on the roof of the car now, but <laughs> any place I can find is flat enough and not dirty, so yeah. Even though this is a bit mucky under here. Got mould in it as well, which I suppose is going to happen, especially with the uh, leaky sunroof. Uh, so I can clean that out. Um, trusty computer side panel. What better metal to use? Uh, this is only skin work, and uh, it's the same thickness as what this stuff is, so it'll do the job. And uh, that bit of plate there. It's got to cut the rest of that rot out, but that can be welded in there. Just like that, and it should fit just about right. And that was more look of, uh, look than judgment, I'm afraid. It just sort of ended up being that shape. As you can see there, now the light's a bit horrific. Um, but yeah, so obviously that's the hole that the uh, the sunroof drain tube goes through. It runs down this pillar, and on these 306s, uh, especially the estates, and I can't I can't say for the. Uh, hatchback or the saloon type, but they run expanding foam down inside this cavity to hold the pipe in place, stop it from rattling around I presume and rubbing the paint off the inside of the cavity and rotting it out. <laughs> well, if only they uh, use better underseal. Uh, or just put a nice plastic arch liner in. It would have rotted eventually still because uh, water would have got in there, but it would have helped stop water being injected into it from off the tyre. Yes, uh, yeah, tyre's right there. Uh, what happened is, is this seam here failed, just about here somewhere, um, and then the rock would have travelled up, up and up, and it would have continued along this seam, obviously a bit here has happened as well, sorry. Uh, this is probably where the seatbelt was mounted because uh, I guess over the years there's probably been some emergency stops and people being in the back of the car, just people pulling the seatbelt, tugging it. It's all little micro fractures that can that can crack the underseal. Um, this is actually one of the main support panels for the seat belt. Um, in fact, this one here is is the one. Um, it has three spot welds on it to drill the panel in. Uh, this is actually the, the seat belt bracket. Uh, I'll get that pipe out of the way. Let's see a bit better. There we go. This is actually what's left of the seatbelt bracket. Now I've already made this. I've already made one of these. Um, this is why it's missing all of the uh, the studs uh, for the seat to clamp onto. You know the uh, the rest, and obviously the big nut which sits here. Which I did reuse that, of course, because the nut itself was in fantastic condition. It was just the outside skin that was you know gone, and that sits. Uh, well, looking at the rust, that sits this way on. Um, let me get it right, hang on a minute. Oh, it sat, I'm pretty sure it sat that way. So that would have sat in there like, like, um, something like that, I think. Um, can't really get the, uh, the, the holes perfect. Um, could have been a bit lower down. Ah, I think it was like that, yeah. There you go. A bit lower down. That hole there, that hole there, and the hole there. And that's how it would have sat in the car, just like that. Um, but as you can see, that was what the seat belt mounted to. Just here there was the stud. Sorry, the, um, the nut welded into that plate. And this is actually sandwiched in between the two plates. Um, it's sandwiched between the suit to two skins, so, sorry. Uh, so it gets welded to this bit here, permanently welded to that. Oh well, spot welded to it, with only three spot welds, which I find nice. Well, four, I guess. Um, and then this skin goes over the top of that and covers it. <laughs> to some extent, anyway. Uh, that's how it's going to happen. It's going to completely cover it this time. 
We're going to try and build this a little bit better than what the original manufacturer did it. Um, we've just got to see, looks like full of expanding foam. Uh, I've actually lost one of my sockets down there, a screwdriver bit, so, sorry. And I think it's now worked its way down into the sill because I have been driving the car around like this. It sounds funny. If you go down the road doing 70 miles an hour and you've got this tyre exposed like this, uh, you wouldn't believe how much wind it kicks up into the cabin. It's uh, it's scary and it's loud. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've still got to use the car. And uh, so long as I don't have the seats, well... Uh, unfortunately, the UK law states that you need to have the seat out of the car removed and the seatbelt removed for it to still be legal. I mean, that I don't think is legal. I'm not sure. I don't think it is. But uh, if I was caught with that on the road, I'd probably get killed but, you know, for, for it. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's in repair and I'm just having to use the car to run and get supplies. But now, hopefully, I'm at the point where I can fix it. Anyway, enough talking. Let's get on with it. Okay, so now I'm getting on to the uh, cutting out and whatnot. Um, this rust on this particular inner panel, I do believe that this rust goes all the way down to the floor. Um, this was very rusty. Uh, this was the panel that sits here, and that's the level of rust we're talking about on the inside. Nice, uh, there's the sunshine, there we go. Nice, crusty, rusty. Um, so I believe that that's going all the way down inside. There's nothing really I can do about that. I can. I'll, I'll tell a lie. I can. I can sort that out. But I've got to cut all this out down to here, and that is something I'm not willing to do. I'm afraid. Um, what I can do is I can um, weld. My my plan is here to weld this, build this skin back up this inner wall, so to speak. Chip all that crap off. So that's all. You know, I call bodge. It's not bodge. It's uh, it's like silicon sealant kind of stuff. Um, stuff they should make out of oil. You know, oil-based stuff, but they don't for some reason. Um, anyway, I'm going to rebuild this back up again. I've managed to cut all that out relatively nice. There's still a little bit of rust at that part there, but I'm just going to have to blow holes through that and keep filling them. I'm afraid because I can't go down any deeper. What I don't want to do is get to the point where I'm causing scorch marks on this side of the car on the paint. <clears throat> um, I really don't want to do that. I've got that bloody hole there I've got to fix. And the only way to do that is to obviously cut out and weld in, but I'm hoping I can do that with maybe um, you know, a die grinder, uh, air driven small grinding wheel, maybe even a Dremel. Uh, just cut a small square out and weld, weld a patch in maybe. We'll see. Um, and I've got to admit, I'm going to be very naughty and I'm just going to cover most of this rust up. I'm going to obviously wire brush it all down, but I'll wire brush it all down the best I can, chuck some rust converter all over it, uh, which turns it into, um, is it iron phosphate, is it? Something like that? I don't know. Can't remember now. Um, chuck some rust converter on it because I have got a load of that from when I did the Fiat Panda. Uh, and we'll see how it goes from there. You can't really see anything because the, the camera's focusing on the outside. Uh, yeah, actually I can see it here now. Oh, there we go. I can look right up into there. If only I had my uh, my light. There we go. Yeah. Alright. And down in there. Down in there. This is also documentation for reference for me in the future in case I get, I don't know, dementia or something, God knows what. You know what hidden hereditary diseases I've got. <laughs> Nothing like looking on the bright side, huh? Looking forward to old age, not really. Well, I am. I get to bum around on mobility scooters, given they're not banned by the time I get old. Yeah, anyway. Talking, talking. Need to do some work. Yeah, I've just gone around the edges with the dangle grinder just to give me something to arc onto. I, I normally don't bother doing that, but it's nice to have somewhat smooth welds. Um, as long as I get this inner panel fixed, that's what I'll, I'll be happy once I've got this inner part done. This part, 
I'm going to be naughty and I'm just going to weld this panel to this panel build that back up somewhat and then just weld that and that together and do a seam weld down it so there's no of this bloody you know bodge stuff that they fill it with this this crap you know I don't like doing that if you're gonna make panels do it properly don't fill it full of bloody crap I know it's probably the cheaper option but damn you'd think they'd be able to make it out of some better stuff like uh, I don't know like a putty or something which is made out of like oil base, like a bit like under seal. You know, you know how under seal goes really dry and you can sort of mold it into like a shape once it's a bit dry. Why don't they just use that stuff? You know, surely the technology's there. They just don't do it. Kind of annoying really. But yeah, I mean so long as I follow to somewhat this shape, uh, it shouldn't really matter too much because I have got this this bit of metal here is a guide to how high I need my um, my mount for my uh, uh, seat belt, seat belt anchorage point. Um, so so long as I don't mess around with this, you know, which is the reason why I don't want to cut this particular part out, I should be fine. Um, when I do make this piece of metal, I have got to remember to put a hole in it for the bloody sunroof pipe. Uh, otherwise that's going to be quite a pain getting a drill, a drill up there with that size diameter up into here to drill a hole through it. Um, so I want to do the hole first. Where did I put that bit of metal? That's it there. I mean that isn't very good metal but it's actually going rusty already. Uh, computer side panel, what do you expect? It's cheap steel. But if you coat it with enough rust inhibitor, paint and whatnot, it shouldn't rot away. That can go in there like that. Bodge weld it in. I'll have to trim it a little bit more, but you should do fine. I was hoping to get this seam um, down to this, but I wasn't very good with my cutting skills, and um, I need it to be the size it is to uh, to, to get it in there. Um, but yeah, I'll just fold this and make a, make a new lip for it to come over. I'll cut this bit, this one off with the grinder and then just fold it over and we try and do a, a, a lip seam all the way up the top um, just try and build this wheel arch basically up again uh, the inner cavity I'm not too fussed about because that is going to be obviously rust proofed I'm going to just get a wax all um, book it underneath the sill drain point which is down here somewhere I do believe uh, then I will get a uh, uh, heating element in there, like off from an old fryer or something. Set it to about 70, you know, 70 degrees, maybe 80 degrees, or whatever. Hotter the better, just so long as you don't get too hot. You can't, you know, stand touching it. Um, and then I will get a, you know, like a diesel pump in there or something, some kind of a, a petrol tank pump. In, in tank pump with a with a filter on it. Um, chuck that in there. Uh, let it run for a bit. Let it free up the pump and whatnot. Uh, once it's hot, it should be quite runny anyway. Generally, generally it is. And then I'll uh, kick the pump off. Get a pipe. Just chuck it in here with a bit of a spray nozzle on it. That I'll make myself out of some nylon tubing or something. Stiff nylon tubing. And uh, I'll run the pipe down into this it'll come down into this cavity which will be built back up again down into here I'm going to run it as far down as I can get so it could probably get to about here if I can get it down here it would be nice the pipe I'll probably just end up drilling a few holes in this just to put poke in and poke the, the pipe in there and then just let the pump run and leave it running in there for ages uh, with it being caught in the caught back in the bucket it should just keep flowing into it filling the whole cavity full of this stuff that should stop it from rusting anytime soon. Um, if you've watched my Project Fallout video, you'll see I did it in that. Um, but the pump I was using was that strong that the, the nozzle I made, I was do, uh, wax sawing down here somewhere, and it was travelling all the way up the seat, yeah, sorry, the B pillar, and it was squirting out across the bloody roof of the car. Um, and I was doing in the in the sills, and it the the jets were going that eye up. They were going all the way up the pillars and. It's in the curve of the roof and then squaring out across the roof. Luckily, I didn't have the interior in the car at the time, but yeah, it would have been a bit of a mess, that. 
Well, if there's no interior in the car, you go to town with it, don't you? Yeah. What does it matter if uh, if you squirt it everywhere? You just wipe it off. The more rust proof in, the better. Right, enough talking. Let's get on with it. Okay, uh, as you can see, that's coming up pretty good. Starting to go dark, which is a bit worrying. Uh, this here, still quite hot. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of been welded up like this. I'm using the original inner skin uh, Just as whatever Oh, this is gonna get covered in under seal. It's all behind plastic panels. So I don't care how it looks It's gonna be a lot stronger than it was originally. Do just running a few spots along that bit there um, Now I'm gonna go and get the seatbelt anchorage point uh, We're gonna just hammer this to a, a bit of an edge uh, Try and get it to line up with those holes. Pretend this, pretend this scrap one is the is the is the original. Sorry, is the new one. I'm going to try and get that. If I remember how the holes line up on the thing. That hole there, that hole there, and that hole there. So that's got to go in there, select that somehow. And we're going to use that. Uh, somehow it's going to work. We'll figure it out. Like I say, a lot's changing. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll do something. If not, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's coming along. It's coming along. Stay tuned. Okay, girls and girls. As you can hear, the fireworks are going off like crazy because it is uh, the fifth of November, which is our Guy Fawkes night, bonfire night, whatever you want to call it. Um. This is as far as I've got so far. I don't know what time it is. Come too late. My brother's only come back from work uh, recently, so not that late. Um, I decided to weld to this plate rather than skin over the top of it. Um, makes it more easy, uh, I guess. Um, yeah. It's coming along slowly, look. If I can just fill this hole up down here, this uh, hole into the wheel arch, I'll be happy. Because as soon as that holds fill, it means that the wheel arch itself will be relatively waterproof. Um, I can literally then just go inside the wheel arch and just paint all of my under seal or uh, tetra seal, which is what I'm, I'm going to use. Just fill the whole wheel arch full of that uh, where it needs it. You can see, I should have really cleaned the wheel arch out first, it's all mud and stuff still stuck to it, which isn't good. But, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty good. And just get a plate welded to this bit here, and I'll be happy with that. Yeah, that should do it good. There are bits and pieces that I've left out, like this part down here. Um, I've left that strategically uh, so I can dump water in it for when I do the welding up here. I'm going to get a lot of splatter that comes down inside and it's going to rattle down here onto this expanding foam and it's going to set fire to it. So strategically I've given myself a little bit of a window that I can um, get in there with the uh, with the squirty bottle. <laughs> Just. Uh, Put, d douse any uh, any would-be flames. We don't want those. <clears throat> Happy to report that uh, the seat clips, however the yeah you know, on that thing there when it's bolted to that it clips on quite nicely. Not bolted down, but I've set it on there and then closed the seat too, and it's it's clipped onto it really good. So I'm pretty happy with how I've got that aligned. Um, yeah. Yeah, let me just get this bit done and we'll call it a day, I think. Should be good. Okay, that is it. The cold has officially set in. And I am going in the house. I am froze. But check that out there. It looks a right mess. <laughs> but it's solid. It'll do. It'll do. So that's pretty good, I'm happy with that. Just got in there to sort out. Yeah? No, there's nothing on the floor. I'll see you later guys and girls. Peace out. <laughs>